Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to the session, the Digital Environments and Indigenous Languages in the Arctic, organized by the Victis International Center, the Arctic Athabascan Council, the Alit International Association, and the Inuit Circumpolar Council. And also, we've been enjoying the support of the Indigenous People's Secretariat at the Arctic Circle when preparing and shaping this session. My name is Sofia Zakhova, and I will be moderating the session today. Um, I have the pleasure and also responsibility to be Iceland's representative in the global, global task force of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages. And probably, as all of you know, this is initiative that emerged as a result of the efforts of indigenous peoples to reclaim their rights and also to nourish their languages. So now this initiative is at the UN level, but also uh, it's important to know that it emerged as a result of grassroots initiatives and mobilization efforts. Regardless of the different circumstances, indigenous languages today also face common challenges in the digital world and have been again dominated by other languages supported digitally because of their official statuses or because of market reasons. At the same time, digital technologies offer a variety of opportunities for addressing challenges that indigenous languages face and could contribute to language revitalization and to sustainable development. Among these opportunities are, for instance, digitization of old materials, production and dissemination of linguistically appropriate e-content for speakers, singers, and other creators in indigenous languages, providing platforms for language learning and teaching, engagement of youth, and strengthening the cooperation between indigenous peoples transnationally. The focus of the session will be on both the importance but also the challenges for the creation of favorable conditions for, the digi uh, for digital empowerment of indigenous language speakers from all generations. And I would like also to outline that Iceland, that historically does not have any indigenous populations, also would like to contribute to uh, the international decade by sharing the experiences of digital technologies and language learning that we have. One example is, for instance, Icelandic online, but Iceland is doing a lot when it comes to, uh, uh, to using the digital tools for strengthening, sustaining, and also language learning. So we hope also we can extend our experience, but also we can learn and hear from other people and other languages. Our panelists today are distinguished, speaker, distinguished speakers representing indigenous peoples' organizations with the status of permanent participants in the Arctic Council. And we have also a member of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues with us today. Let me introduce them to you in order of presenting. Tove Sonval Gant, head of Greenland's representation in Reykjavik, and also, as I mentioned, member of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Melody Siksik Lavale, Inuktut Policy Advisor from Nunavut Tungavik Incorporated, and she is also the Inuit Circumpolar Council appointed representative as a member of the Global Task Force of the International Decade of Indigenous Languages for the Arctic region. Nadine Kotruten, Executive Secretary of the Aliot International Association, and Chief Bill Erasmus, Deni Nation Chief, and also representative here of the Arctic Athabascan Council. I very much look forward to hearing your valuable insights and discussing the intersections between indigenous languages and technologies from the perspective of your language work and the organizations that you present. And each speaker will have um, up to seven, eight minutes, and you're welcome to come to the podium or uh, make your statements from there. Thank you very much. Tove, please. Thank you, Sofia. Uh, 
And thank you for putting this very important topic on uh, digital empowerment and indigenous people's languages on the agenda at this Arctic Circle environment. As Sophia mentioned, we are just at the beginning of the international United Nations International Decade on Indigenous Languages that is hosted by UNESCO. And as we heard, they also have some bodies and where my neighbor here, Melody, uh, is also part of uh, the steering committee. Uh, and, uh, <coughs> and, and just to, I mean, the idea of an international decade on indigenous languages uh, actually came uh, through a, a resolution of the UN General Assembly it is in its annual uh, resolution on indigenous peoples' rights. And UNESCO, as you know, and the steering in, together with the Global Task Force and the Steering Committee has also uh, made a global action plan and where uh, digital empower empowerment is very much part of, uh, is also included. Um, and this is when I take on my hat as member of the, the UN Permanent Forum in Indigenous <laughs> Issues, this is also something that we follow very closely uh, from the Permanent Forum. Now, allow me now to zoom into to Greenland. Gerachisut, uh, Greenlandic, is the official language of Greenland. Uh, and that was established with uh, the enactment of the, the law on, uh, or the act on self-government in Greenland in 2009. And then in 2010, a new law, uh, legislation was also uh, adopted uh, on, on our language, on Gerachisut, and it establishes uh, the language uh, Council on Language, which is mandated with the task of uh, developing terminology and approving uh, terminologies. And then we also have a Place Names Council, and this is also important to bear in mind. Um, I mean, many of the Arctic explorers coming to Greenland have over the years sort of Oh, this mountain, that is Fridtjof Nansen's uh, or whoever, or, yeah, whoever's uh, land or, or mountain. So, so the Place Names Council is actually working on Greenlandicizing uh, the many uh, place names or bringing them back to our own original place uh, names. And then to work with them, we have a language secretariat, which is actually uh, the engine, the, uh, the work uh, shop of the Greenlandic language, and where they are also uh, involved in the development of terminologies, making uh, dictionaries, and also very much involved in, or actually has a leading role in developing language uh, technologies for, for the Greenlandic language. When all that being said, um, you would think that the status of, of the Greenlandic language is perfect in Greenland. This is, however, not true. We see that uh, Danish is still very dominant in, uh, in workplaces, and that also goes for the public administration in Greenland. Uh, and, and that is even though that all political decisions have to be made in Greenlandic. But then, in reality, among us as officials, down in the machine room, all documents are bilingual, Greenlandic, Danish, and as officials, we also use Danish a lot. Um, and then also when we look at education, I mean, we are faring pretty well when it comes to uh, elementary and lower secondary uh, education, but then 
when you come to upper secondary education and onwards, uh, tertiary education, then the Danish language becomes very uh, dominant in the, uh, in the textbooks. And then another thing is also uh, the challenges or the threats that we get uh, to the use and the vibrancies of, of, the, of our language, especially among children and youth, is what comes via the internet. I think I have mentioned it at many several occasions, but I mean, we are actually in a situation where China, I mean, dictates which language our young youngsters should speak. And I mention China specifically because they own the internet platform called TikTok, which is really the everyday life of even very small children in Greenland. So suddenly, you, I mean, you see very small children in, in, in Greenland who rather than speak their mother tongue, uh, Greenlandic, uh, speak English with each other, or if they're bilingual, then okay, instead of speaking Danish, then they, they will speak English with each other. So that is a challenge. Against that background, Naila uh, Kasusud, my government, the Greenland government, uh, organized, uh, hosted a seminar in 2022 where well, they addressed many of these issues uh, and came up with a number of recommendations. And there are several, but I will just mention a few that is very, very important for our topics today. And that is that there is need for much more linguistic research in our language, Gadatli Um I mean, we have seen a positive to development recently where more uh, a budget was allocated to our uh, university, these amendments are fixed so that they eventually can, yeah, in the, in the language uh, department can uh, develop more of a linguistic, uh, uh, more linguistic research capacity in our language. So that is very positive. Uh, and another thing is also what was pointed out at was the need for more research, but also capacities for the development of digital platforms, the digitization of Kadashisun. Um, I think uh, as Kadashit, I think many of our young, younger people are actually quite uh, uh, has been very open into the world of uh, IT technologies. So we have many technicians within IT technologies, but the challenge is that of combining that of really uh, being yeah, involved and engaged and have a solid knowledge of your own mother tongue, and then combining it with your take with, uh, yeah, capacities. Now, Dr. Susun, my government is firmly committed to the continued strengthening of our language, but also, and that also means that of winning new domains. For us to eventually succeed, it also requires commitment from each and every language user in Greenland. Educators, parents, etc. We all need to be involved. But it also requires international cooperation on this. And this goes both for international co cooperation in linguistic research among policymakers in techn technological uh, innovation in languages. And it also, because technological 
innovation is really so important also to feed into artificial intelligence, which can be then have a more empowering effect if artificial, if we use artificial intelligence wisely. So this also means that the, the international big tech companies take more of a responsibility of their products, but also in, in investing in, uh, in indigenous languages. I know that, for instance, in Inutsidut, you had a good uh, example. You will probably mention that a melody on, uh, on having Inutsidut uh, used on Meta, which is now known as Facebook. Uh, earlier known as, as Facebook, and the Xiaomi also have had uh, good experiences, but the big tech, tech companies need to take more of a responsibility and invest much more in indigenous languages. Because I think we come to a, to a stage where indigenous languages and the digital empowerment in indigenous languages should be defined as a global public good. So with these words, I will end. And sorry for taking a bit too long. We are now. Thank you so much, Tove, for providing the context of the international decade at the UN level and then really zooming in into Greenland and showing how many challenges uh, we can see in a country in which you would suppose that an indigenous language that has an official language status would have more favorable environments. And thank you also for listing all the needs and challenges and how they need to be addressed up to the really need for support and allies also beyond indigenous peoples with the commercial companies in the IT sector. Um, so now I would like to invite Siksik for her uh, remarks. Thank, Thank you. Sophia. Is this on? Koyan Nimi Kaiko Yasima Siksik Melody Samutok Lavali Nguyunga, Kang Klinang Nunavu Muta Yunga. Hello, my full name is Siksik Melody Samutok Lavali. I'm an Inuk woman from Kanyaklinak Nunavut, or Rankin Inlet Nunavut, and I'm very pleased to have been invited to speak on this panel. Uh, at Nunavut Dungavik Incorporated, in my role as Inuktuk Policy Advisor, as well as, as ICC's appointed Arctic representative on the Global Task Force of Indigenous Languages uh, for, the interna yeah, for the International Decade of Indigenous Languages, as Tovi had mentioned, I've had the opportunity to hear from the international Inuit community many times about their hopes and their challenges when it comes to our language, especially when it comes to accessing digital resources in our language. This past July, the ICC held an Inuit delegates meeting in Ilulissat, where the international Inuit community met and held focused workshops over a period of four days about areas that concern our livelihoods. And I had the opportunity of hosting one such workshop with Aluki Kutik, president of NTI and a member of the United Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. The theme of that workshop on what it was, what Inuit would like to see done to protect, promote, and revitalize our language over the period of Indigenous languages and beyond. I was moved to hear from many Inuit who shared stories about feeling isolated from their communities because they had lost their language or because they had to move to an urban location, whether for education, for work, or due to lack of housing in our communities. The cost of returning home and the unstable internet access in remote Inuit communities often make it difficult for us to feel connected to our language and culture after we've left. 
As an Inuktitut language reclaimer, it is my dream that my daughter, my six-year-old daughter, will be an Inuktitut language warrior, and she will not have to face the same barriers that I and many other Inuit have faced growing up. In 2016, Canadian lawmakers declared that access to inexpensive, dependable, and fast broadband is a basic right for all Canadian citizens, no matter where they reside. According to the Canadian Radio, Television, and Telecommunications Commission, download speeds must be of at least 50 megabytes per second, and 10 megabytes per second upload speeds for fixed broadband services. In one of the more affordable service providers is $100 Canadian or 70 Euro for 120 gigabytes for my five megabytes per second upload speed. Canadian law says it must be 50 megabytes per second. A few months ago, I spoke with an Inuit digital media artist about how she had dreams to expand her work into Inuktut children's animation and gaming development. I felt inspired listening to her ideas and the things that she wanted to achieve about getting more content up in Inuktitut to expose Inuit children to our language. But their internet access made it difficult for them to upload the animations. Additionally, she was waiting until her next trip to southern Canada to update her illustration software. This may sound odd if you're unfamiliar with such conditions, but for myself, I was not surprised to hear this because a lot of indigenous people who live in the Arctic accept this as a standard of living. The solutions are already there, but there must be a willingness to act on them. In the absence of that will from governments, and TI is actively bringing Arctic communities up to par with non-Indigenous communities. And TI's priority areas, for example, for the next five years, include increasing Inuktut language content by working to address the shortage of Inuktut on mainstream media, as well as building on existing digital platforms already in place. Inuit have invested in an educational broadcaster channel to ensure that there is Inuktut programming, and TI has supported the community radio stations given the strength of radio to foster community connections. In 2022, NTI worked with Meta, as Tove had mentioned, and the Pekokvik Center, a grassroots Inuktut language school to launch Inuktitut as a language setting on the Facebook desktop as an option for Inuit language users. While in Alaska, my Inupiaq brothers and sisters previously launched Inupiatitun as a language setting on Facebook in 2018. Inuit in Alaska and later in Nunatsiavut have worked with Rosetta Stone to have Inuktu available for language learning. And NTI is currently in the process of launching a new fund for Inuit language content creators. And if that weren't enough, you know, we have continued to control and manage Inuktu community radio broadcasts. Inuit are also making award-winning feature-length films completely, completely in Inuktut. In fact, Iglulik, the birthplace of Isuma Productions, has held two previous, previously held two community plebiscites to prohibit the importation of television sets due to the concern that it would deteriorate the Inuit language and culture. Inuit are ready, and we have been ready for a very long time to share our rich language through the means of digital technology. Uh, thank you, Sik Sik, for providing uh, highlights from the current developments uh, when it comes to your area and uh, support for Inuit language and culture, but also for bringing uh, one important point that is solutions and will uh, versus implementation and support, um, which is probably something we can discuss also later. Now I would like to invite uh, Nadine from 
the Alert International Association for providing her opening remarks. Uh, do we want first to see the video or no? Okay, please. Uh, thank you all. Uh, my name is Nadine Kachutin. I'm the environmental coordinator with Aleut International Association and um, uh, it's great hearing all of the uh, programs and stuff you have going on uh, with your Inuit language. It's very uh, inspiring. Um, I'm not a, a speaker of the Aleut language, which is what we call Unangam Tunu, um, but I do have a short video to show you. Um, uh, and speaking on that video is our former president of our board, Sally Swetsoff. Um, but before we show that, um, to give you a little bit of background, um, the majority of the work that I do um, for Aleut International is working with, directly with our Aleut tribes in the Aleutian and Pribilof uh, region of Alaska and working with them uh, on their environmental programs that have to do with solid waste management, air quality, and climate change initiatives. Um, so the video that we had made uh, was... Um, translating the LEO network about cartoon um, into Unangam Tanu um, uh, just to, as a way to, well, it seemed like a small task um, when I uh, offered to, to do this. And um, it's about a minute and a half long, and I just assume that our, our friends at our... Um, at another Aleut organization in, in Anchorage who has a large cultural heritage program that I'll talk about a little bit later, um, that somebody within their staff in that department would be able to easily translate um, this video and you know this very short uh, dialogue for me. And I was told that um, it, it's, a very, it's of a very technical nature because of where our language is. Um, it's, it's, it's in very much in danger of being lost. Um, we have about three dialects. So there's an Eastern dialect of Unangam Tanu, a Western dialect, and also a Medni Island dialect, which um, was spoken uh, on Medni Island in the Commander Islands by our Russian uh, Aleut family. And uh, the two... Um, Fluent speakers on our Russian side have passed on last year and the year before, so um, <clears throat> I think we're down to less than 20 speakers worldwide who can still fluently speak our language. Um, so we're putting a lot of work into working with them and gaining their knowledge and expertise and teaching the next generation. And this video that I, I had uh, worked on with Moses Dirks, uh, when I had it made, they was told that he's the only person living that was able to um, translate that type of uh, document. And he also does work with the um, uh, he also works with an APIA at their Cultural Heritage Department, and he um, requested that Sally Swetsoff help him with the uh, translations. So um, I'll let you uh, see this short video so you can hear some of our Unangam Tanu language um, spoken. Leo, awam satwa hapan ako. Once lum kuban ang kahil gana, husugan tin isgan ako. An rarin as hasinam is slum kuban, slahus amaslah, matalin tin is hanana, ukurte chakus. One leo awam satra, matalin slas, manam is ilan, an rarinan, slum kuban ukuchiku. Leo makarsin is an rarina, softal ilan, anan slas, matalin tidik is hanana, leo man, hakata tida. One Leo awam satra slang to kumis ama Allah sin an rarinangis hakatanangis ilartimis tutakus an rarinam hakula rulangis ilartimis tinis kidukus. 
Kartas ilachtin is suchtal, an rarinas, slas matalin, sluranach, kurantin is renana, u kurta kalikus. Matalin slachtin is renana, hadan tunum kaka kurt, slach matalin is renana, idachtalakan arumis, tinis kidul, hadan tunum kaka kurt. Wangen tu tusingen ama tunungen slas matalin wan slum kuran tin ishana na hadan ngin hakata tiko. Just in a, a little bit more background about that video and working with Sally Swetsov, she, she has been, you know, uh, traveling occasionally for us. She was the president of our board for a number of years, so some of you may have met her. Um, and in working with, you know, elders and capturing uh, their knowledge about our language, I, um, you know, they were, they've been doing it for many years now, and they... Uh, so they're, you know, recording these things on their phones, sending it to the videographers to, to put together those, the short video like you just saw. And uh, my initial reaction when I heard Sally speaking on that video was that the videographer speeded, sped it up. And I'm like, Sally does not speak that fast <laughs> at all. And I was a little irritated. And then I, I just kind of, went on with my work and one day I was sitting at her house with her and she was, I was watching her record um, these, uh, these words to make that cartoon and um, she tells us all the time that um, uh, English is her second language so <laughs> she does speak English much slower than you hear on that video but when she is speaking her, her first native language she does speak that fast. <laughs> So, and then another way that I've been working to incorporate language into some of my environmental work is to have, uh, have signs made um, in Unangam Tanu to send out to our Aleut villages. I was able to work um, uh, with some of our solid waste management funding to, to get some of this signage made. So we're having some of these signs sent out to our region. Um, depending on which dialect is spoken in the community, though, that would be the uh, the appropriate uh, dialect on the signs. And, um, uh, and then some of the other work that's going on in our region that has to do with language is by Aleutian Purple Off Islands Association. Um, we're very connected with, with them. They do select our board members in the United States. Um, like I mentioned, you know, we, we lost our two speakers on the Russian side. Um, the, the fluent speakers, but there are still um, uh, connections being made over Zoom and um, through teleconference where they get together during uh, special times of the year to, to celebrate or to sing songs with each other or to just kind of check in. And we have all of those uh, conversations recorded. Um, there's weekly Zoom lessons. Um, for people who just, you know, have 20 or 30 minutes uh, a week or twice a week to get together and, and learn Unangam Tanu. Um, they're working with a lot of different elders to, um, to hear their story, to, to listen to them speak in Unangam Tanu and then transcribing and translating all of that. And one of the things I learned about recently uh, that our region is doing um, that has to do with language is um, they're implementing a program with a grant from the Department of Justice Office for Victims of Crime to assist victims of crimes through cultural healing by developing culturally relevant material and media. And uh, this is pretty much newer for our region. Um, there's uh, travel money there to support people to come to the culture camps that are held all throughout our region in the year. Um, all the way from, you know, young kids up through adults can come and learn how to make the beaded headdresses. The, um, can we see the next slide, please? 
to have the regalia making, to, to make the bentwood visors, um, to learn language, to learn how to butcher seals and caribou, um, uh, learning how to um, still work with our traditional foods. Um, so I think that's also very inspiring to know that we're um, assisting our our people in, in different ways. And, you know, you don't just go sit in a doctor's office and, and hear from some psychiatrist or a psychologist about uh, dealing with problems or if you're a victim of crime, something like domestic violence or um, elder abuse or uh, all sorts of different crimes. There's uh, these opportunities to work um, with our cultural revitalization programs, which, of course, incorporates a lot of the language. And uh, another funding pot that they have to um, focus on some of that is with the tribal opioid settlement. So um, just different funding out there that's contributing to our cultural revitalization um, and I think I might be over time. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have two apps that Aleutian Pribla Off Islands Association has put out to, uh, for people to work with and learn Unangam Tanu. Uh, we're also connected with the uh, program, uh, the Arctic Council Project on Languages. Um, there's two apps out there, one to learn the Eastern dialect of Unangam Tanu and one to learn the Western dialect of Unangam Tanu. And um, within some of these programs that people are working with uh, on our language, they do have, they have hired media specialists to be able to contribute to this digital, um, uh, the, 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 di the digital uh, new way of learning and teaching and uh, working uh, with our languages. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is the first word I learn now, but I promise to learn more uh, and try the apps that, uh, that you mentioned. Uh, and thank you so much for uh, bringing really one important point that uh, when we are talking about extinction and endangerment, we're really talking about critical figures of uh, only 20 or in some area, two people or a person, which is really, um, um, really something that needs to be addressed. And thank you for the work, for sharing the work uh, that your association is doing and other, uh, other parties utilizing digital technologies and also using tools like videograms and, uh, and others to spread knowledge and information also, including in your language. Now we are moving to our last panelist, Chief Bill Erasmus, uh, who will provide some notes and highlights from the work of the Athabascan Council and yes. the Nation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'll, I'll speak my language a little bit so you have an idea of what it sounds like. It's uh, somewhat different than the other three languages or two languages we've heard. So, Masi, Gamadon is a Deneyati Natsodie, Masi, Tsuku, Tai Tsuku, Konde, Nizi. What I said was um, I'm very happy to be here to present with. Um, these other people uh, to talk about our languages, which are a priority and, and um, mean so much to us. Um, language is, is, is so important, and I think we could probably talk um, a lot about the importance. For example, we are called Dene. Dene means a person, it means our people, and it means it could mean one person, like a man. So depending on how you use it, um, yeah, there's certain significance with it. Um, 
just another example. For example, uh, for for this place, for this where we are, we we would say, depending on a dialect, but we would say kong. This is a place. This is a house. This is a spot. But that same word kong, it also means fire. So depending on how you use it. Um, and, and then, I mean, there's, there's so much to it, I could speak a lot about that, but just fire, your home, your warmth, all of those things. And w when you learn the language, then you, it, it means so much because English is, to us, a cold language. English is really difficult to, to express. If you see our people talking a language, there's, they're animated, they're having fun, they're laughing. Uh, but when we speak English, it's, it's, it's harder to get to, to that point. Um, again, dene, it, it relates directly to our land. De is a river or water. Ne is the land, dene. Mm -hmm. So it brings the land and the water together, connecting to be a person. So we're, we're directly attached to the land. Um, we um, are doing a number of things in, in, uh, in our part of uh, the world where I'm from, and that I can really only speak for that to a large degree, but um, um, the, the Dene, uh, we're a huge family. Um, the Arctic Athabascan organization represents people from the Northwest Territories, which is um, in Canada, and the Yukon, which is in Canada, and our people in Alaska. But we also, there are Southern Dene. They go all the way down to Mexico. Um, the Navajo, for example, are Dene, language very similar to us. And um, um, some of you may have heard of Geronimo. He was Dene, and he resisted the American uh, movement into their territory and in their, in their lands. So, um, in terms of trying to maintain our languages, and we're, we're concerned with the same thing that Nadine just expressed, that we're losing our fluent speakers. As our, as our elders pass on, they're taking so much with them. They're taking so much with them, and it's hard to, um, it's hard to maintain that. My father, for example, spoke a language that many of us no longer speak. He had expressions and uh, nuances that that we don't have. A lot of us use uh, slang. A lot of us um, make shortcuts. A lot of us include English. And uh, we know what we're saying, but it's not proper and it's not uh, constructive as it should be. So we, we, we really have to make the effort. Um, there are some uh, important developments if you travel in the Northwest Territories where I'm from, and also this is Nunavut, I'm aware that there's a lot of place names. Names are changing from uh, when the fur traders came in and so on, they gave names to communities. Now we have our own names for all of those places, so the names are reverting back to our own, our own names, which is important because people then understand why we, 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 we have a certain name for a certain community. Like for example, a community across the lake where I'm from, uh, it used to be called Snowdrift. And we never knew what, why, where the name came from. It didn't really come from our people. But the people there, they call it Tlutselke. Tlutselke means where there's lots of fish. Tlu is fish. Ke. I was saying that earlier, we say con, a little bit different dialect, the place, the place where there's lots of fish. So they're significant. 
People lived there because it was easy for them to survive, or easier because there was lots of fish. So there's a lot of place names, and it, it's, it proves to be a, a good thing because people are learning, and not only our people, but others. They say, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then they want to learn. Um, there's other things like um, um, in the Northwest Territories, for a number of years now, the languages, all of our languages, um, have been recognized as official, which is a good thing. However, the difficulty and the problem is they're not on par with French, for example. In Canada, there's English and French, and there's a lot of money put into English and French. The, the same is not for our languages. We don't get the funding to promote our languages and, and have all of the benefits that the other two languages have. So there's a long ways to go there. In addition, in the last couple of years, in Canada, they've officially recognized all of our languages across the country, which is good. But again, you have to put the money and the effort into it in order for those languages to really flourish. So a good effort, but you need the, the financing. Um, we have noticed a number of things. Um, people are talking about TikTok, very similar. We have some communities that never had television until very recently, and we know that when television comes in, we're starting to lose our language because it's only English or it's French. And then our children think that they have to speak English. And so they're losing their language. Uh, a small community was telling us, you know, within a year, within two years, the children are, are not speaking the language. So we have to monitor the TVs. You don't have to have the TV on all the time. Or you have to find ways to include language in the things that the children do, like, like in their games their video games, and so on. So we have to get creative in terms of responding to that kind of need. Um, we participated with other uh, Arctic Indigenous peoples to develop, uh, very recently, the Indigenous Peoples Language Map. And if you go on the um, Arctic Council, Arctic Council um, uh, app, or not app, but uh, website, you will find uh, the, the map that shows our different languages. And we participated in identifying and help people know where our languages um, are. And um, it's really interesting that, um, especially our people where we're from, we overlap a lot with the Inuit. And uh, we've been having discussions. We reminded each other that, for example, when Nunavut uh, the border, the boundary was put in place. We met with the Inuit over a period of time talking about where the boundary would be. And I always remember this one meeting we had in uh, Copper Mine, Kugluktuk, um, where the Inuit were telling us where they came, which we thought was really into our territory. And then when we got up to the map and we started talking about where we went towards the Inuit land, they thought we were going way into their territory. But we didn't, no one, no one argued or anything. And then when we went back home, we started talking about it. And this one, this one old timer said, well, where did they say they went? So we told them where the Inuit went. And he said, do you know what time of the year they were there? And we said, no, not really. So the next time we met, we asked, we asked them, where, what, what time of the year were your people in this area? Because we thought it was too close to us. So they told us. So, they, so we found out that, yeah, the Inuit did come way down close to us. But at a certain time of the year, they came there when we were not there. And then... We found out later that we went in a certain area, in the Inuit area, when they were not there. So we overlapped 
And maybe years and years ago, they must have made some kind of a deal, you know. Um, but we all shared the land and regarded it as, as our lands. So very interesting. We found it so, so fascinating. And we also know that, and this, this is, we're losing this now. We have sign language amongst our people. There's a language that we use without talking. And I believe we use that with the Inuit people because we communicated with them and we meet each other on the land. And if we're hungry, we need meat, we need fish, tobacco, sugar, salt, whatever. We communicated. And uh, some of our people spoke in Niktitut. And I know some of the people um, also spoke our language, especially around Copper Mine, uh, Great Bear Lake. I don't know about Rankin in that way, but um, people tend to believe that we didn't work together, that we were enemies. Not true. Our people say it's not true. They're, they're, in our language, we call them unta. That means, hard to explain in English, unta means um, they're strangers, but they're our relatives. It's not a bad term. Like an English um, stranger could mean a lot of things, but it means we know who they are, but they have different language. They're, they're different, but, but, but they're, we're close to them. So uh, we're, we're concerned with that language, that sign language, for example, is being lost, and we'd be very interested to talk to the Inuit people to, to try and um, understand what that is. Um, there's other things that uh, we are quite concerned about. Um, just commenting on the broadband, I'm really glad you brought that up. Uh, for example, it's very expensive. It's very expensive. We have to pay a certain amount for a certain amount of money every month for a certain amount of broadband. And once you use that up, that's it. Or you have to pay more. Now you go south, no such thing. It's unlimited. It's unlimited and it's fast. So uh, there has to be greater effort to, to do that. Now, I have other things to say, but I know I, 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 I can add them in before the end of the day. Thank you. Thank you so much. Masicho. Uh, thank you to Bill Erasmus for bringing a broader historical context, but also some uh, highlights from the linguistic repertoires of your community and the interactions with, um, with the Inuit neighbors. Um, I had uh, a couple of questions and we were hoping to open up for questions from the audience, but I'm afraid uh, we don't have the time. And for your final point, I would like to, you to, to ask you to address uh, uh, the following question. The use of social media and digital technologies has grown rapidly among indigenous peoples. And I'm here uh, speaking more about the youth uh, and teenagers who engage with issues of identity, social justice, culturally appropriate practices, and storytelling. Uh, what are your observations and reflections on these processes in your own community that you would like to share now as a final point? Thank you. And we can start with Tove. I think I already in my, in my talk uh, mentioned the challenges there are with the use of the, yeah, the digital media platforms such as uh, TikTok. So I think it is essential uh, for indigenous peoples actually to take ownership and control of all these media platforms. And there I believe it's also important that governments, state governments, has a role and responsibility there to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'll be quick. So Inuit have been very active and engaged with the digital environment and the digital tools that are available to us to ensure that our language and culture can continue to, th to survive. So for example, Inuit often use TikTok and Instagram to have, for example, Inuktut word of the day and pronunciation. Uh, Inuit have worked with Microsoft to ensure that Inuktut syllabic keyboards are available for Inuktut language users because this creates, uh, it opens doors for unilingual 
uh, enables speakers to communicate more broadly, and it creates community online for young indigenous people who have a story to tell. So. Thank you. Nadine? Um, uh, so within the Aleut region, uh, a couple of years ago, there it was also very difficult to uh, have connectivity and communicate and to, you know, the far west Aleutians, these small islands uh, over there towards Russia. Um, so at least in the United States, um, uh, you know, we have Starlink now. They're, everybody is connected. They're streaming Netflix in our communities. Um, they're also laying a subsea fiber optic cable out through our islands. So we have that uh, capacity now, and I think that um, we will see great things with uh, our, our youth and, and our language um, uh, with those new capacities um, to, to be connected. Um, and just the same as everybody else says, they're using TikTok and Facebook, and, and um, it, it's great to see uh, some of that cultural and language revitalization happening like that. Yeah. Yes, um, we are using some of the same methods, but one of the things we want to do is we have a, a Denny mapping project where we mapped all of our land use in the 70s, and I know the Inuit also did the same. Um, we have recorded uh, hunters and trappers on the land, we recorded where they, where they went and so on. Now we want to be able to bring that into the schools with the young people so that a great grandson today can find his grandfather speaking the language and utilizing, finding out where he went on the land and, and connecting the generations by our language. So we're looking at that kind of a development. The other the other thing is, um, one of the things we want to do, and I'd be very interested to talk to others, is um, it's not only indigenous languages that uh, we can learn from, we need to learn from other societies. How have the Jewish people maintained their language? How have the um, Asian people kept their languages? And so on. We should have a, a, a bigger meeting to bring in all of these peoples to help us so that our languages do not diminish in any more and, and, and learn from each other and, and, and communicate. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, let me once again thank you for being here with us and sharing these important points from your work and uh, the organizations you represent. And let's hope that we will continue the dialogue uh, at the next assembly and in the meantime at other forums that relate to languages and indigenous peoples. Thank you so much.